Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this episode, I'm doing some beautiful fall photography with a waterfall, foreground elements to work on composition. I've got a polarizer on the front. I'm using ND filters. So we're gonna be talking about all these different steps to get here, knee deep in the water, set up and get shots like these. So if you're interested in this, let's get started. If you are new to this channel, my name is Matt Shannon and I'm a full-time photographer in beautiful British Columbia. Whether you're here to learn, be inspired, or simply enjoy some stunning visuals, you've come to the right place. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. As the seasons change, Vancouver Island is embraced by low pressure systems that bring heavy rains to the region. Streams and creeks swell, and waterfalls seem to pour from hilltops into the valleys below, creating a landscape both powerful and serene. I'm in a river right now, and I got this Beautiful waterfall right here. I've got my Nikon Z9 and I got an older kind of DSLR lens. It's the uh, 14 to 24. And since it has a bulbous lens, it's, it's got a round lens to it. I had to get the mount system right here that is uh, from Lee Filters, so that I can put on a polarizer. And what I'm gonna do is uh, set my back viewfinder here up so I can have it really low to the water and I can kind of move around checking different compositions. Once I find a composition that I like, you know, its height, how close to the water, then I can bring my tripod over, set things up and lock get locked and loaded to take some shots. Okay, this is the scene with the polarizer and this is without a polarizer. So as I turn the polarizer, you'll see that reflection fade away, not only from the rocks, but even the greenery up along the valley here. So up on the left and the right side, you see how much more reflection that is removed. Now here's another composition and some reflections I might want in the water, but it's amazing how much the polarizer takes out kind of that nasty bright white reflection. Okay, I'm going to start with the, the foreground back here because I like it the best. Grab my tripod here. Now the one thing I got to always keep on me is a microfiber cloth to make sure that there's no water droplets kind of on the front of my lens. So I've got these rocks right now in the foreground and I really like this slanted one. It kind of shows this leaf towards me and then I wanted to make sure that there was a little bit of color here off in the background. So if we look at our composition here, And I press record so you guys can see what, I, what I'm seeing. There is a leaf kind of in the foreground and then there's a couple of ones to the side that kind of balance out I think some of the, the amounts of leaves that we actually see here. Some of them are actually like they float in and they're a bit distracting so I remove them. Okay, one of the things that I'm gonna be doing is stacking my photos so I'm taking a foreground picture where I touch the screen, I focus on the foreground, takes the picture. Then I might do something in the midground, and then again in the background with the waterfall. Now the waterfall, I'm going to be shooting at maybe a quarter of a second or a third, because I want to see that texture. The water is actually moving quite fast, especially down at the bottom. So I don't really want a like five second long exposure there. That'll look too sort of blurry and blobby. I want to see some texture there. So 
That's where I'll focus on the background here. There we go. Now I have a two second delay on everything. There's not, there's nothing that's moving. Now if I was on a log, I would probably want to set it to like say 10 seconds, move off the log, let everything kind of rest and then take my next shot. Uh, but so far with those three images, I think I'm good for my depth of field. Be sure to stick around if you want to learn how to stack multiple images in post-processing later in this episode. I've actually lo lost my light here. There's a bunch of clouds all of a sudden so I hope the clouds clear because when the sun hits it doesn't hit down in the valley here but it kind of lights up the top of the valley here where the where the waterfalls coming in and uh, it's it's really quite nice the rocks down here are super colorful you got a lot of blues you got a lot of browns so having the polarizer on so you can see the rocks down in the foreground is is kind of a big deal uh, really showcases how beautiful this creek is. Okay, it's just starting to rain, which is kind of funny because it was just so sunny and there was no call of like clouds even, let alone actual rain. So it must be just a quick shower. Uh, I've got everything set up over here and you can see that there's these white bubbles that are moving along. It's uh, always changing the amount of bubbles and the flow is fairly consistent trying to get them so they streak so if you go too fast it's uh, just a short streak if you go too long they kind of just disappear because uh, the the white kind of you know only has a, a certain lasting effect on a long exposure if it's too long it's almost like they they disappear they're invisible so you have to balance between like one second two seconds and that's pretty much as far as you can go unless you get more intensity of, of bubbles uh, where it concentrates some of the, the, the highlighted, you know, whites from the bubbles here. So I'm going to take some shots here. I'm hoping the sun's going to come back out. And I do have my film camera that uh, I'm going to try out here in a minute. Okay, I'm back in the office. I got my images loaded up on my computer. And here I'm gonna show you just how to stack your images where we have the foreground sharp in one shot, mid ground on a second, and then a third where the background where the waterfall is flowing at a third focus. Not only that, I did slow down the waterfall to like say a quarter of a second or a third of a second, where sometimes the foreground, I let it, uh, open shutter around one second sometimes four or five seconds depending on those bubbles or if i wanted a little bit more of the white wash uh, for some of the little uh, rapids over the rocks so we're going to go ahead and balance those out and i'm going to show you how to make a composite image out of those okay now that we have our three images here we got our foreground mid ground and background we can just hit shift and highlight all three of those yellow selected images. I'm gonna right click, go edit in, and then I wanna make sure that I open as layers in Photoshop. I don't wanna edit in Adobe Photoshop. It'll open separate windows. So we wanna go down to the bottom here and open as layers. 
in Photoshop. So you'll see here that they are now in one window as layers. And I can remove all of them except for the first one, which is the foreground here. And I'm just going to take a look at it. Yeah, everything looks nice. Mid-ground and background. Okay, now before we get started on blending, we want to make sure that we're aligning all three of these images just in case we bumped the lens or the camera or the tripod. Uh, and sometimes even when we're focus, we're moving the focus, uh, the, it shifts a little bit with the, the glass um, in the lens. Uh, you'll, you'll get a bit of a movement. So I, we want to make sure that all the pixels from each image is perfectly aligned with one another. So we want to go to edit. Now this is after we highlight all three of them. We want to go to edit and then down to auto align layers. Here I just pick auto. Okay, now if we zoom in, this is after aligning the three images and you can see that it was off just slightly here on the edge. So this is why it's important to um, make sure that we're, that we're aligning these images so that everything is tack sharp and perfect. Okay, now that they're aligned, we can highlight all three of them again and just go to auto blend and we select stacked images, seamless tones and colors, content aware, fill transparent areas. Sure. Press okay. And then it'll automatically do it for us. Voila. So it added a lot more of the bubbles, which we might not like, but at least everything is nice and sharp in the background, foreground, leaf looks brilliant. Everything looks really, really good. Now, if we get rid of that um, one where we stacked all three of them, you can see these layer mask thumbnails that it's picking anything and everything that it thinks that is sharp, including these little bubbles here, and layering them all in, stacking them all in. And we might not want that. You can see from the first part, it said, all right, all of these are sharp. We're going to put those together. And all of this is sharp. We're going to put that together. Now, let me show you a different way because this might be a little bit too convoluted. It might add in things that you don't want. And since there's only three images, we can do this by hand, plain and simple. So let me reverse all of this. There we go. So we got our three images. Let's start with the first one. This is our first one, and we might really like the bubbles, the streaking bubbles, which I do. Uh, all right, the second one. So this will be our base layer. First one is, is nice for the foreground. The second one, we'll click on this. This is where we get tons of these little bubbles here. It's a faster shutter here. And you can see the rock here in the foreground is pretty sharp. Actually, it's pretty sharp on this one too. It just starts getting a bit soft here on this log and further back. So if we keep this turned on, I'm going to highlight this, go down to the layer mask selection. So I click layer mask. Now white is to reveal, which is what we can see. We can see that whole image, that image number two, we can see everything. Black is to conceal. So if I go command I, now I can't see that image. All I can see is the first one, which is our base, which shows us the nice sharp one in the foreground. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pen. In my case, I have a pen. You might have a mouse. And I have a tablet here, and I'm just going to paint in what I like about this, this second image here, which is really everything in the mid-ground. All of these rocks right here, I'm going to want to make sure that that is nice and sharp. So if I pick a white paint, so I get the paintbrush here and I'm picking white. If I'm painting white, white is to reveal. So if I start painting here, I'm now revealing that layer. And you can see it starts getting nice and sharp here. Even that rock, I'm just gonna sharpen that rock. The water here, I'm gonna let, let it be a little soft here. But these rocks, I want them, I want them tack sharp. There we go. That looks nice. Let's see what the water, I like this water a little bit sharper, a little bit more detail. 
I can soften the water here, but these rocks, I want to make sure that they're nice and sharp. This little log here, nice and sharp. All of this right here, nice and sharp. And let's smooth out this water down here at the bottom. Maybe I do want that water a little bit smooth. Sharpen that rock, that rock. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out and I'm just going to go 100% with my opacity and flow, which it is right now. And I'm just going to sharpen everything back there. Now this is layer number two, which is my mid-ground. Layer number three, which I will click the little eyeball here so we can see it. Now we can only see that one because it's we're, we're working with layers. So it's like the, the top page is now folded on top of the other two layers. So that's all we see. Um, we'll select that. We'll go down to our layer mask. And it's white, so we still just see that one last image, which shows it nice and sharp in the background. And of course, the foreground is blurry. So white is to reveal, so it's revealing that image. Um, black, command I for invert, is concealing it. So now we see those two images that we worked on, the, the foreground and the midground. And we're going to paint in our background with white paint, right, to reveal it. So here we go. I'm revealing that waterfall. Looks nice. And I think some of these, the rocks and stuff probably need all painting because now we're working with the sharpest part of this background which is everything that lines up with that waterfall. There we go. So there we have it. We've got three images here. The foreground, which was our base. I didn't have to do anything to it. That was the first one, uh, the bottom layer. And then the second one, I started painting in what I wanted it to be seen over top of the first one. So that's the midground. And then the last one, which was the background, I painted in what I wanted that to be seen over the other two layers. And then we end up with one composite image where we have foreground, midground, and background layered. Uh, but what's important here is that the bubbles are nice and smooth and the rocks are nice and sharp. So I did decide, no, I wanted longer exposure for the, the bubbles and the water. But maybe for you, if you did this, you would want those bubbles to be dotted. This is where there's the, the creativity is just endless when it comes to when it comes to all of that. Now I'll work on some of the color, some highlights. I'll do that pretty quick. Um, I'll talk about this or I have talked about this in other YouTube videos of doing color, uh, doing contrast, dodge and burning. Uh, but for this really exercise, I wanted to just show you the layers. Everything else is a little bit more color and highlights. So maybe I'll just speed that up and, and show you sort of what the final look is for this image and how I would edit it. Um, but let me know down in the comments if there is something else you want me to show you. Maybe there's something even during the speeded <laughs> up way where I've, I've created some sort of lighting or haze um, that you want to learn, let me know it down below. Well, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, think about subscribing. Thank you so much for being here on my adventure. I hope to see you on the next episode. Ciao.